In this lesson, we'll be practicing using reference planes to increase the accuracy of our model. Revit's an awesome tool to aid in the production of your project. However, you can still be just as inaccurate as if you're using CAD or even hand drafting for that matter. The one thing we need to make sure of is that we don't lose focus on the basics in terms of laying out a building. This is where reference planes come in handy. The objective of this exercise is to learn how to lay out a building using reference planes as a guide. Open the file you've been working on, or open the file called Chapter 3 and follow along. Now that you have your model open, make sure you're in Level 1 under Floor Plans. What we're going to do first is add a reference plane right up the middle of the building. On the Architecture tab, and on the Work Plane panel, click the Ref Plane button. Notice that the Temporary tab shows up to let us modify or place the reference plane, and we have the Draw panel. On the Draw panel, make sure that you have Line selected. Zoom in on the midpoint of this line and move your cursor over it. Move your cursor down or up until you see that midpoint snap. Be very careful because there's several midpoints here. We don't want to catch the wrong one. Make sure you're at the inside face and make sure you find that midpoint. Once you find the midpoint, pick it. Zoom out and extend the line all the way through the building. Hit escape a couple times and you're good. Go ahead and select the reference plane. Notice that there's little grips on the ends of it. A grip means that you can select it and drag it. What I'd like to do is select this grip right here, hold down your pick button, and drag it out to about here. Then hit escape a couple times. The next thing we want to do is add two more reference planes, one above this one and one below it. What's going to happen is we're going to model a corridor coming off the back of this building, and we're going to use the reference planes as a guide. I'm all about the easiest way to do stuff, and the easiest way to add another reference plane when you already have one in the model is to right click on it and go to create similar. Suddenly, we're launched into the modify reference plane tab again. This time, however, on the draw panel, I want to click the pick lines button. Now the options toolbar, I want to give it an offset of 15 feet. Once this is selected, all we need to do is come down and hover over the top of the reference plane. Revit will put a temporary extension line above it or below it, depending on which way you mouse over the middle line. Mouse over the middle line to the top coming down and once you see the temporary extension line appear above it, click it. Do the same thing. When you see the temporary extension line go down to the bottom, click it. Hit escape a couple times. One cool thing about reference planes is the fact that you can give them labels. Go ahead and select the middle reference plane. Over in the properties, notice that we can give it a name. For the name, let's call it Center of West Wing. Hit apply. Hit escape. Another thing to point out is the fact that reference planes show up in every view. Let's take a look at the elevation over here, the west elevation. Remember how to open up an elevation? Zoom in on the little hat and double click on it. Notice the reference planes are here. When we're laying out our building and we need to model something from one side of the building to the other, we know we have one strong established reference plane. Go back to floor plan level one, type ZA to zoom all, and save your model. So, can you model a building without reference planes? Yeah. But at least now you know you don't have to, and you don't have an excuse.